right. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. We are excited to uh, be here with you today and on co-working live with Red Worldwide. I am thankful that we have a uh, community of participants that show up every day and we have people who are actually showing up um, on our page. Every time we go live, they get, uh, uh, if you've liked and subscribed you know, to the podcast, you get some sort of notification and you know that we're going live um, at that time and you're able to log in to gain access to what it is that we have and that we'll be sharing on that day. And so with that said, today is Wednesday and on Wednesdays we talk about creativity and uh, innovation. We talk about, you know, how these things affect you in business and what it is that you need to do to maintain it. How do you stimulate it? How do you make, make sure that you're constantly um, able to iterate or innovate, you know, in your uh, area of expertise or what it is that you're doing in business, or even if you're a career bound person and you are an executive or you're working um, a regular job, you still need to maintain creativity and innovation. And so we're going to really, you know, dive in today and talk about the tie between wellness and business innovation, because a lot of the time we don't really think about, you know, how our being well or feeling well can really affect our ability to be creative. And I want to point out a few things. Um, you know, I'm big on case studies. And so, you know, when we start talking about things like this, I always want to point to businesses who do it well. Uh, so I've noticed that, you know, Apple and Google and Amazon, you know, have some really interesting ways that they make sure their um, employees are able to remain creative. One of the things that I was very impressed with was the pods. You know, some of you guys might have heard about the Google pods, you know, how um, Google has uh, sleeping pods at their locations and uh, people are able to go and take a nap. This was huge, huge science uh, years ago when it first started way before Google. You know, there were studies that were done to talk about how, you know, people who were able to get the extra nap, the power nap in the afternoon um, came back firing on all cylinders when they, you know, um, came out of the napping phase and went back to work. You know, so there were some people who would uh, take a lunch, they would eat their lunch, and then they would go to sleep, okay? And then they would go back to work. And some of the studies, and we'll bring out some of the statistics on that in a future session, but some of the studies showed that people, you know, not only were, you know, far more creative, but they also... Um, were able to close more uh, deals. Um, they had a, a higher closing ratio, you know, when they were able to rest and refresh themselves in the afternoon. We noticed this um, being the case in other countries as well. And I don't know if anyone knows, you know, who's watching this about how, you know, in France, they have, you know, these longer lunch periods and Everybody breaks for lunch and they come back, you know, and then they continue their day. And I remember years ago, you know, looking again at some of the studies on what that did for creativity, how it affected kids, because kids were in school and they had to take these two hour, two and a half hour lunches, you know, and go back to school later on in the afternoon. But they were far more creative. They did not fall asleep in class and they were able to be more functional. They learned better. Um, there was uh, this stick to itiveness that happened with their brain, you know, for whatever it is that they were learning in the afternoon that was very, very different um, because of the nap, you know. So I'm saying that, you know, we want to be looking at the things that we can do. Um, you know, I love the ecosystem that's at Apple, the way they created their environment, you know, at their location and what they've done for people to make sure that they have a a feeling of wellness and a feeling that somebody's concerned about them and how they are uh, feeling, in, you know, on a, a daily basis. One of the things that we do at our office in Fort Worth, um, we have a wellness room. And so the wellness room is available to be used by any person that's at our office. 
Uh, but it's mainly for the people that work there more than it is for the people that come, you know, um, outside of work. When we had the, we had uh, several offices, you know, in our location when we had everyone working in the office. Now everyone's working from home, but when we had everyone working in the office, we had also a room that was designed for people to go and, um, you know, rest. Uh, they could take a nap. They were, they were. Um, all sorts of wonderful wellness um, items in the room that help people to uh, be more, you know, relaxed. And, and even if they needed to come and take 15 minutes or 10 minutes to just get away. And I had clients that actually would come and ask if they could sit in our room, <laughs> which was an amazing thing, just so they could um, refresh themselves and get their lives together. <laughs> So it was quite interesting, people that would just stop by at lunchtime so they could sit in our room. But yeah, so we have the general wellness center, our wellness room there at our location, but we also had our own private one for our company, you know, because it's a shared office space with the other companies. So um, we really do believe that mental health gets improved, physical health gets improved, there's a better work-life balance, and we are able to integrate, you know, wellness into your business strategy, it does make a difference. So let's kind of talk about this because it's really important. One of the main things that I want you to understand is that mental health has become a big deal. And um, it's such a big deal now that people are beginning to have more conversations that are centered around mental health and the shame and some of the stigma that used to be on um, the mental health conversations have disappeared and they're starting to become a thing of the past because people realize that we have to prioritize our mental health and our emotional well-being um, and, and the well-being and emotional health of um, our people that are working alongside of us, people who work with us. And I, I hesitate to say work for us because, you know, I believe in us working together to accomplish a purpose. And so when you have people that are on your team, they're on your team. And, and the more you're concerned about the team, the better outcomes you'll have. And so we kind of talked about that a little bit in our session uh, previous, but let's kind of look at this today from this standpoint that we have some examples. Starbucks is another company, and if we did a case study today on Starbucks and the way that they prioritize mental health and emotional health, we would learn a few things. There are things that they make happen for their employees, um, and there are some studies, and one of the studies show that 81% of workers face some form of burnout or mental health issue, and 68% of employees say that their daily work has been interrupted by mental health and emotional health challenges. So healthcare is one of the many industries that, you know, um, we want to really pay attention to because when you don't have uh, proper and appropriate care, sometimes you don't even realize and you won't prioritize your health your mental and emotional health, because it's like, well, I don't have the ability to do anything about it. And so with that said, what happens is people just keep working and working and working and they face these peaks, you know, in um, the demand, you know, for mental health services, uh, people ending up at, you know, the hospital and an emergency because of the fact that they didn't know how to prioritize. So some of the things that you can do, you can take mental health breaks. And it's okay for you to take a break. And you, you know, don't necessarily have to explain to people what it is that you're doing. Just that you're taking a break is really, really important for you to be able to prioritize your mental health. I went through something early in my 20s where I didn't realize um, that I had had a mental health issue. Um, it's something that had occurred and I lost all of the memories with regards to certain things that had happened in my life. And as a result of, you know, me getting uh, better relationships and people in my life and things felt more, um, you know, co comfortable for me, what ended up happening is all my memories came back at once. And, you know, um, it wasn't uh, the, the easiest of processes to walk through that. And I mean, at 22, 
And so I'm sharing that because people don't always understand that there are different types of emotional and mental health issues, but we have to foster, you know, um, the kind of, uh, I would say, climate in a in your business to help people understand that it is okay. We can problem solve and make sure that we are providing the kind of support that you might need as a person who is having, you know, a mental health challenge or an emotional health challenge. So we want to highlight it with regard to this, you know, the importance of a supportive culture that encourages open conversations about mental and emotional well-being. It's really, really important that you are um, transparent and that people are able to, you know, understand the role that it plays and that mental health plays a role in um, in innovation. There's a wonderful article, and I'll uh, put this in the chat um, here, and I'll make sure that it's available also for people who are um, online on YouTube. Um, that's on LinkedIn, you know, by Milan Arakovic, and basically he's in cybersecurity, and he's a business automation specialist, and he does oh help people overcome challenges with technology, but he also talks about mental health in this article, and he talks about how it's a critical component, you know, of overall well-being, and it has a significant impact on a lot of areas. But one of the things that it has a significant impact on is creativity. And so he shares in his article, you know, that creativity being the fundamental element of innovation, you know, it is not going to be something that people are able to do well if they have issues surrounding their cognitive, emotional, and psychological well-being. If they don't have the resources necessary to think innovatively, then they won't be able to push out something in a more creative way. Things that are more mundane and they don't necessarily serve you or your clients well if you're not able to continue to innovate. So that's really important. Now, the second thing is, is physical health does also weigh in on innovation. You, you need to understand that physical well-being, including your rest breaks um, and water breaks, can boost creativity and lead to greater innovation. And there are some significant studies, and this one is another one that was, is available um, in LinkedIn. And so I'm, I'm throwing this in the chat right now for people who are here with us live. And uh, But I also want to make sure that people who are not necessarily live are able to gain access to this as well. I just threw the one from the, the LinkedIn article from Milan, but I, I want to actually uh, throw this other one here from Daniel Kwabina Awusu, Awusa, I'm sorry. Um, and he talked about, you know, the connection between rest and innovation, how taking breaks boost creativity. And so um, right alongside of what I was talking about earlier with regards to having the afternoon nap, you know, he talks about how these particular rest breaks affect productivity. It is a common misconception that working longer hours is going to produce, you know, more uh, powerful and um, creative types of things, or it's going to make you, you know, more productive. In reality, the research that he found showed that overworking leads to burnout and it has decreased creativity. I go back sometimes and look at things that I created when I was really, really tired and say, oh my gosh, you know, I should have went to bed. Because <laughs> I find out that, you know, the more tired I am, the less, um, you know, uh, impactful some of the work that I have done is. And so rest is really, really, really important. It's not just important to the day. Um, and it's one of the things that um, Daniel talks about, the work day that you're, you're having the rest, but it also is important to the days afterward and everything else that, going, that goes on around it because the, the sleep gives you the productivity you need to continue doing good work. You know, and so when you prioritize rest and you get enough sleep, you can really be uh, more productive. So getting enough sleep at night is one thing, but also taking the opportunity, if you can, to take an afternoon nap really works well. We have some con 
comments in the chat, and I want to bring those to bear. Um, Crystal is saying, yes, more companies are providing employees mental health days when they are feeling burned out or need a break. And, you know, it is true, you know, and I think that when you're creating your company, you need to be thinking about this because it is a really important um uh, tool using rest as a tool is really important. Okay, well-being also, you know, um, helps you um, make sure that you are not dealing with stress in a way that's toxic. Um, research is showing that activities such as meditation, prayer, um, mind-body exercises, and spending time on walks in nature, they improve your mental health and well-being. And what I have found is when I'm really struggling with trying to bring some, you know, powerful concepts to, to light, you know, when I jump in and I'm able to prioritize my, um, my rest and reduce my stress, you know, what ends up happening is I end up with a much more uh, run, a much more powerful run of ideas and concepts, you know, and the lapses in my thought process are just not there. The fog that I would sometimes feel are not there when I'm able to take these times of prayer and relaxation. I created it because I work from home most of the time. We don't have an office. I find myself working from home, you know, more frequently than not. And so because I work from home, when I'm in a, in, the California area and not in Texas, I have created a clear space in our home office. We have the one space and then we have a space that's outdoors. And I think it's so important for you to create and curate a space that you can be creative. You know, what is it that you can do in your space? I created a space in a closet because I needed to have somewhere to really go and just think through things. And it's very important that you you know, create for yourself the space that you feel comfortable in and the space that makes you more creative. I found that I was more creative in one season of my life when I had a larger space. So I would get out into nature and really, you know, find myself with my, you know, journal and my pen, okay, or my tablet, you know, able to, it, made, it, was, it made a, a situation for me to be able to take in more information and, you know, create more options for myself to hear, you know, the thoughts, you know, and to activate, you know, that part of me that needed to be activated so that I could create. All right. So, um, Having the physical health and innovation to tie in is really important. Introducing you to the concept of integrating wearable technologies that will help you monitor. I use my Apple Watch. My Apple Watch tells me when I need to stand. It also reminds me, you know, when I may need to take a rest break. I have those things programmed to do that so that I am being mindful because sometimes I'll start working and I'll forget that I even haven't eaten. You know, I, I want to say that when I was there uh, in Florida, I, there is a process that Crystal Morgan um, and Tommy Holloway use, you know, at HM Life. <laughs> they asked the question, when was the last time you had a glass of water? <laughs> okay, You know, are you drinking enough? Are you getting enough rest? Do you need to take a rest break? You know, and so those are the wonderful things that I think that when people are collaborating and in groups that they can do for each other, asking each other, okay, is this a good time for us to take a break? We've been at this for a couple of hours now. We need to, you know, stop and drink a glass of water or we need to possibly, you know, take a few minutes to, to get a walk because what I have found also people who work from home sometimes overwork without realizing it. They are so into what they're doing. Sometimes days will go by. I remember that I would be in like the dragon's den is what they call it, you know, um, and I would be there for three or four days working on a project, not even realizing that I've been up that long. You know, when I was a little younger, it was really bad. And I had to come to a mindset that this is not healthy and I've got to do something different. So what are some strategies for achieving work-life balance and understanding, you know, the benefits um, in a way that it makes you change something? And this is really, really important. You know, you've got to be able to look at what, you know, is is available and utilize some of those 
um, you know, ideas for what it is that you're doing. Examine how these innovative companies are excelling by creating a culture that values the work-life balance. Look at, you know, what you can do uh, to define work-life balance for yourself. That's really important. And what is it that you can do to integrate wellness into your strategy? You know, what are the things that you can do in your current um, situation that creates a solution, you know, to the potential uh, overwork, you know, or overwhelm that can happen when you don't take the time to, um, you know, prioritize your mental health, your your well-being, and uh, with your business. Look at ways that you can provide for yourself opportunities of continuous skill development in this area. You know, go to a webinar, go online, find places that you, you know, can get ideas about the way that you change your thought process when it comes to um, having a mentally healthy work environment. You know, and if you are finding that you working from home is toxic and it's not become fun or it's no longer serving you in a manner that's powerful and positive, then maybe you need to change that. Maybe a couple of days a week, you need to go and work at Starbucks or go and work outside at the park, you know, and take everything with you and just change your physical location just so that you can create, um, you know, and enhance your problem solving skills and, um, and get some cognitive flexibility. I like that, those words together, the cognitive flexibility, because the resilience that you're able to create when you are um, a lot more calm and peaceful and you've actually taken the stress, you know, out of your life you de-stressed, it really is going to uh, create a much more innovative process for you. And you're able to really bring forth a products and services that will serve people better. Um, it also helps you foster a better work environment for the other people that you're working with. When you are having a situation where you're working with all the blinds closed and all the lights off and, you know, um, Sometimes that can create an environment that is, you know, um, unbelievably toxic. So you want to, you know, create those times where everything is open, the lights are on, you are actually got, you know, in a situation where you have real air coming in your window and not the air conditioning. You've done some things to create these wonderful opportunities for yourself and those around you that are safe you know, for your creativity. So with that said, I'm going to open up the, the lines for people to share. And um, if there's someone that wants to um, give uh, some examples of things that they're doing or that they've done, you can put it in the chat and I'll read it. Or if you want to share it live, you can. But I think it's really important for us to, you know, weigh in on this because the diversity of thought that comes from uh, being in a situation where you can hear about other people's stories and how they've made things safer for themselves or better for themselves as they've been working from home or working in an environment uh, that is no longer toxic is an uh, amazing thing. Okay, so anyone want to share, you know, feel free to unmute your mics and just jump in here. <laughs> Okay, nobody's come forward. I know I would ride my Peloton oh, there we go. For, okay. a, for a walk for five minutes to incorporate some exercise to help with the mental health aspect of it. Something different when we say we don't have time to exercise, but you make time to do so. Mm. It gives you a break and it also relieves and creates those endorphins to make you feel better, especially if you're being stressed at the moment. You're trying to change your environment. So you change your external factors to change the internal factors within you. Wonderful, wonderful. Thanks, Crystal, for that. Change, I love that. Change the external factors to change the internal factors. That is an amazing concept. And I think it's really important. Um, I know that uh, in, I did a, a 
certification a few years ago called uh, the happiness coaching, you know, and learning how to live happily. Okay. There are a lot of people who don't have that as a part of their mindset and they are not happy and they don't want other people to be too happy around them. It's like, what's wrong with her? She's always so happy. And it's very interesting that that's a thing that it really is a thing. And so my thought is that for people who are struggling in this area, they really may need to seek out, you know, more uh, training on how to bring those endorphins to life. Um, I shared uh, with some uh, in a recent time when we were kind of riding down the road about, you know, laughter therapy. It's a real thing. And when I was in school getting one of the alternative health certification that I have, we actually learned about laughter therapy and the statistics um, and the data with regards to how many people had been cured from cancer and lupus and some of these other types of debilitating diseases where they were not supposed to be any cures from laughter therapy. And they were able to document what they did, how it was done, and the exact time when the body began to respond to the happiness or the laughter. And so one thing that you might consider is having times that you are practicing bringing yourself up to a level of uh, the experience of laughter and happiness, because I think that it's very important for you to have these endorphins in your life. Uh, I, I know that, you know, for some people, your faith tradition may be a little different, you know, than others, but in the in our faith tradition and, and our, the way that we um, walk things out in our family, we, we ascribe to what it says in scriptures. And there's one scripture that I think about that laughter doeth good like a medicine, you know, and so the, it does create endorphins and it is medicine to your body when you actually are able to laugh and have a joyful attitude. Um, Crystal says, yes, laughter is. It can change your mood and emotions instantly with little effort. I see Kevin saying he's participated in laughter therapy. That's awesome. Kevin, can you unmute your mic and tell us a little bit about what that was like? Yes. Um, so what I went through was, it was called laughter yoga. It wasn't really, um, I guess there was some stretching involved in it, but most of it was, uh, was um, practicing the laughter. We had a laughter coach and the coach would, would coach us on just doing the sounds like ha, you know, like ha, ha, ha and stuff like that. And, um, it uses a lot of your breathing. It helps oxygenate your system. So you get the oxygen deep down in your, in your system. Mm -hmm. And, um, it really, it doesn't, it has an amazing lift on your mood. It changes your whole state and it, it it's very, very helpful. Um, that is awesome. Yeah. I, I've seen some of the studies on just the syllable um together and when you have the ha ha and the he he what that can do inside of the body and what types of things it releases so down to you know the laughter itself you know being you know of course um the key thing to re you know to release the endorphins into the system but the other thing is that it also changes other hormones and um so that's another set of studies that we might want to bring in you know, in a future class, but I really wanted to, you know, just kind of get people thinking about, you know, the tie in between wellness and well being and creativity and your business. What will it mean when you're able to have some of these tools infused into what you do every day so that you can become more creative? And how will it change things in your company, you know, when you're able to create and foster? a culture um, of wellness, you know, so that people are able to feel more confident about um, their mental health, their emotional health, their well-being, and what that can do, you know, for, you know, making it such that they um, do a really good job. I see another comment here, the task will not seem so daunting. Absolutely. You know, when you are able to really push out, you know, um, a product, uh, 
and, and you can do it in less time because you've been able to handle some of the mental health issues or emotional health issues that you might have, you, you'll see the benefit. Because for me, I have, you know, taken 25 years to write a book and then I've done it in 125 days. <laughs> If that's a, you know, if you were able to see the difference there, you know, um, it just was like, oh my gosh, I got to get this book done. I got to get this book done. I got to get this book done. And it was drudgery. Why? Because I was having such a difficult time balancing everything. And I had poor boundaries. I mean, everything bled over into everything else. There was never any rest time. I hadn't taken a, taken a vacation in years. You know, I, I mean, it was just horrible really bad. And when I was able to start, you know, uh, maintaining, you know, some of the more powerful tools, you know, that allowed me to rest, take rest breaks, uh, changing my calendar around so that I was able to get an afternoon nap, um, fixing it so that I had, you know, um, access to better quality snacks and things of that nature for the afternoon, like real fruit and not things in packages that had a barcode, you know, those kinds of things. The water, you know, quality water was, you know, something that was really, really important. So, you know, these are the things that I would push out there to you today. Um, and I really do appreciate all of those who have um, participated. I hear I have one other person. Laughter can be a form of worship and spiritual warfare as well. Absolutely, Kevin. That, thank you for that. Um, so, you know, as we're, you know, rounding the corner on um, closing out our session today, I want you to really be thinking about a few of the things that we said. I'm going to go back and, you know, just summarize, but I want you to just really have this in the forefront of your mind that prioritizing your mental and emotional well-being is really a business imperative. You need to make sure that you understand that the role that mental and emotional health plays in fostering creativity and problem solving is huge. It's not something to um, just discount or, you know, say, okay, you know, that's something that we could be thinking about. But in the context of business innovation, it is key. It's paramount that your mental health, physical health, and work-life balance are things that you are prioritizing. It is your responsibility. The other thing is, is when you're looking at physical health and innovation, I want you to be thinking about, you know, integrating some sort of a technology to help you monitor and improve your your health metrics. It may be something that you do on your phone where you set focus times, times that you're going to focus on what you're doing, and then times that you're going to take a break. That might be a way forward for you to get started because if you're not able to include these rest and breaks in your day, you will not necessarily be able to boost the creativity at the level that you can when you do. It does foster greater innovation. Um, you do end up making more in, uh, impact when you are able to have that rest in between and your physical well-being is, you know, at a higher level. And then lastly, you know, when you're thinking about your work-life balance, you know, examine how you are making sure that you are balanced with your family activities, flexible work arrangements, holistic well-being, and you know, approaches that you can put in place so that you are able to integrate wellness into every part of your business strategy, okay? It, there is a, a real need, a vital need for leadership, uh, people who are running companies, people who are starting companies, people who are models uh, in companies because they're executives, you know, to really prioritize these aspects and to model this behavior before others so that it becomes a culture and everyone is able to do it. Um, with that said, we are um, moving forward uh, with uh, tomorrow um, being a part of our week where we talk about, you know, um, having access to, 
you know, some tools, the technologies and media and how we can utilize them in our businesses. So please be looking forward to that. Um, I see one more um, link in here, or not link, but a, a comment. It says there are apps such as Calm that can help with mindfulness breaks. Absolutely. I have Calm on my watch. I have Calm on my phone and on all of my tablets. And um, it's a very good tool to use um, to help you uh, to get rid of overwhelm and to get rid of stress. Okay, a key point, prioritizing mental and emotional well-being is an imperative for business innovation and work-life balance. Okay, that's the, that's the point that we want to kind of stress out of everything we've said today, key point. And oh, green noise, absolutely. Green noise is a great also for you to utilize as a um, you know, way for you to, you know, take breaks and, and pay attention, you know, to uh, some things. And I want to also bring out that people who are using or uh, have never used um, the uh, frequency music, you know, you might want to consider that because it actually will help the brain to go into a theta stage or delta stage or alpha stage. And those stages are indicative of different types of activity. So utilizing frequency music, you can find it on YouTube, um, you know, to help you uh, make it such that you've got some kind of background noise or something that is uh, playing to help you get into these particular stages of um, mindfulness and, uh, you know, rest uh, to bring healing, you know, to your body and to your mind. Okay, well, with that said, we're at the top of the hour. Thank you so much for being here with us uh, for our co-working session today. We look forward to those of you who are going to be here with us tomorrow as we kind of round the corner and end our week. We look forward to those of you also who are going to be here Saturday for our Smarter Start Boot Camp. We've been having an amazing time in Smarter Start Boot Camp, and so we have some things we're going to be doing this week, and you want to be there. Must be present to win, okay? Um, I'm going to actually give out the audio book for those of you who were in the session yesterday. I talked about the Built to Pass audio books. If you come on Saturday, you'll get a copy. Um, you know, you'll get the link so that you can listen to it. Uh, <laughs>